Hello and welcome in this new guide brought to you by hdesigntutorials.com. Today we'll take a look on how to record your computer screen and voiceover using free and open source softwares. First of all, let's download the necessary applications for our tutorial. Go to your Google Chrome browser, then click the address bar and type in obsproject.com, then hit enter. OBS is a free and open source software for video recording and live streaming. I'll click the Windows button to download the Windows version. Now open up another tab, then from the address bar, type in PX keys strokes, then hit enter to search. In most cases, you will find the link to PX keystrokes in the first line of your search results, but if it's not the case, then don't worry, you will find the links in the description below this video. PX Keystrokes for Screencasts is an open source app that can be used to highlight all your mouse actions and keyboard shortcuts during your screen recording. So let's click the link here to download PX Keystrokes. Here we are. Now let's go ahead and install OBS Studio. Once the installation is done, click Finish to run OBS. After running OBS for the first time, the Auto Configuration Wizard window will pop up. In this tutorial, I'll explain how to use OBS for screen recording, so I'll select the second option to optimize the settings for screen recording, then click on Next, then on Apply Settings. First thing first, let's create a new folder in where we can store the captured videos. Then let's go to File menu to adjust the basic settings. From the left, click on the Output tab, then from the Recording settings, I'll click on Browse to change the default recording path and select the folder we've just created in a desktop. Let's change the recording quality to indistinguishable quality. Also, we can change the recording format into any other available format in the list, but I do prefer to keep the format as MKV, which is the default screen recording format used by most screen capture softwares. Now, I'll switch to the Audio tab, then from General Settings, I'll change the sample rate to 44.100 kHz, which is the standard sample rate for audio recordings. After changing the audio sample rate, a warning message will show up to inform you that the software needs to be restarted to apply the changes. So, just ignore this message for now and let's go ahead and adjust the remaining settings. Now, let's switch to the Video tab. In the video settings, by default, OBS will automatically define your display resolution, but at any time you can change that to whatever resolution you want. The last setting is the video frame rate, so I will change the frame rate to 30 frames per second, which is good enough as a frame rate to record regular video tutorials and screencasts. But not that, for example, if you want to record video games, maybe you'll need to increase the frame rate to 60 frames per second to correctly record your game's motion. Now click on Apply, then click OK to apply the settings. OBS Now will need to restart to apply the settings, so click on Yes to restart the program. Now, before you start recording, you need to make sure that your audio output and input are working properly and will get in capture it during recordings. So, to make sure of that, we can simply observe if there's any audio signals by looking to the meters in the audio mixer. By default, in the audio mixer, there are two meters. The first one is your desktop audio output signal, which represents in the sounds going out from your speakers, and the second meter below it is the microphone signal, which is the input signal. 
If you have already connected your microphone and everything is correctly configured, then you should see the microphone signal moving when talking near to your microphone. If not, then probably you need to go to your control panel to adjust your sound setup. Usually, a microphone signal is a mono signal that is in many cases considered as a left channel. So, to adjust this, click the settings wheel under your microphone meter, then select advanced audio properties from the menu. In the advanced audio properties window under mono, check mark the box in front of your microphone channel to switch it from only left to centered mono, then click on close. Now your microphone's mono signal will be heard through both the left and right speakers. Now, let's play any audio file from our desktop to check if the audio output signal is working properly. If you can see audio signal in your desktop audio meter, then it means that your audio output is getting captured properly by OBS. Now we can start recording both audio and video correctly. First, let's add a capture source by clicking the plus icon here, then select display capture. In the window that follows, you can give your source a name or just click OK to create the source. In the next window, make sure the Capture Cursor box is checked, then click on OK. By default, the preview window will immediately show you all the actions happening on your screen, but also the preview area itself is getting captured and everything is getting captured and repeated infinitely. Exactly like if you were standing in between of two mirrors, so if you don't like to see this and or if you are getting confused by this illusion, then you can simply right click the preview area, then click on enable preview to disable the preview. Now let's run a test recording, so let's click on start recording to start capturing the screen. For example, let's say you are a designer and you want to record a photo manipulation tutorial. So let's, for example, go to Adobe Photoshop and record anything as an example. Let's switch back to OBS to stop the recording. And let's go to the capture folder we've created in the desktop to take a look on our test recording. Great, that was nicely recorded. Now, unfortunately, there is no option in OBS Studio to highlight your cursor actions and recording your keyboard shortcuts, and maybe it's important for you to show your viewers what shortcuts you are tapping to do specific actions, especially if you are creating software tutorials. So that's why we've downloaded PX Keystrokes, so let's run it and discover how to use it to highlight your mouse and keyboard actions during screen recordings. Once you run PX Keystrokes, you'll figure out that your cursor now is highlighted in a transparent circle. You can hold Ctrl plus Shift plus Alt keys on your keyboard to move and position the area in where the keyboard shortcuts will be displayed. While holding Ctrl plus Shift plus Alt keys, you can click the small settings icon to open up the settings window. In the settings window, you can change the highlight color for the cursor. As well, you can increase or decrease the cursor's highlight opacity and also changing the size of the circular highlight. Also, you can adjust the settings for the size, the distance and the direction for the icon which highlighting the mouse clicks and actions. We can also change the background color for the area in where the keyboard shortcuts are displayed. At any time, you can hold Ctrl plus Shift plus Alt keys to move, reposition and resize the shortcuts area. 
Let me show you the live example of how the shortcuts are going to be displayed. For example, in Adobe Photoshop, let's select this layer and tap the Delete key to delete it. And as you can see, the Tap It key is instantly displayed in the shortcuts area. Now, let's select the layer and tap Ctrl plus J to duplicate the layer. And as you can see, the shortcut is getting mentioned above the previous keystrokes. You can also increase or decrease the opacity for the background color as shown. We can also increase or decrease the shortcut's font size and also adjust the text alignment to the center as shown. If you don't want the keyboard shortcuts to get stacked on top of each other, then you can simply decrease the history count to 1. And also you can decrease the history timeout to 4 seconds or less. So now whenever you tap shortcuts on your keyboard, only one shortcut will be displayed and it will remain visible for 4 seconds. Good, now let's say if you want to record your video tutorial on several parts, for example you want to start your video recording in the first part in Adobe Illustrator, then after that you want to take a break, then come back later to record the second part in Photoshop. Let's see the live example for that kind of situation. I'll start recording first in Adobe Illustrator. Then I'll stop recording this session. Then now I'll start a new screen recording session in Adobe Photoshop. And as an example, let's do anything in Photoshop. Then let's stop the recording. And now, if you go to the Capture folder, we'll find two captured videos. To combine the two videos, we'll need a video editing software like, for example, Adobe Premiere Pro. But if you don't have Premiere Pro, then you can easily use the photo app available in Windows 10 to combine the two parts. Before we open the Photos app available in Windows 10, first we need to convert our MKV video recordings to MP4 format, because the Windows 10 Photos app won't accept the MKV format. So first let's go back to OBS Studio, then go to the File menu and select Remux recordings to convert the MKV files to MP4 format. Let's click the three dots icon here to navigate to the captured video files, Select the files and then click on Open. Finally, click on Remux to convert the recordings to MP4. Now go to the taskbar and click the circle icon button to open the Cortana search and then type in Photos, then click the Photos app from the results to open the Windows Photos app. From the top of the Photos app interface, click Video Editor then click on New Video Project, give your project a name, then click on OK. Click on the Add button, then from the drop-down menu, select from this PC. Navigate to and select your files, then click on Open. Click, hold and drag both clips to the storyboard. Now from the preview, you can clearly see that both clips are now combined together. Now click on Finish Video and make sure high quality is selected and use hardware accelerated encoding if available is checked, then click on Export to export the video. Select a folder for your export, then click on Export to export the video project. So this is how to combine two video recordings using the Photos app and taking advantage of the free video editor available in Windows 10. The last thing I want to show you in this tutorial is how to record audio separately using OBS Studio. 
So let's say, for example, if you don't want to record your voice over live during the screen capture and you want to record it later, separately, in this case, what you can do is turn off your microphone during the screen recording and then later start a separate audio recording in OBS Studio. Let me show you how to do this. First, let's delay this source and then add an audio input capture source. Don't forget to go to the Advanced Audio Properties and check the box under Mono. Now let's click Start Recording. Notice that, when recording only an audio input source, OBS will pop up a window to tell you that there is no video source added and that the output will be a blank screen video with only audio, so just click on Yes to proceed. So let's, for example, record some finger snaps to test things out. OK, let's stop the recording, then go to the File menu and select Remux Recording to convert the MKV file to MP4. Now let's open the Photos app and go to the Video Editor. Inside the Video Editor window, let's click the Custom Audio button. Then click on Add Audio File and select the Captured Audio MP4 file. Let's click Play to preview. Also, you can add another audio file, like for example, adding music in your video project. You can also adjust the volume level of any added soundtrack. Let's play a preview. Good, now we can go back to the Video Editor page and click on Finish Video to export the work. Finally, I hope you enjoyed watching this video tutorial. Thanks for watching and please don't forget to subscribe.